So we're racing back to my capital because the Japanese have five melee units, five warriors, and then one range unit. And all of my all of my military was was several tiles away. Uh, we're racing back home. Let's see what happens. So here we go. Um, I'm I'm trying my best to yeah. I'm gonna about I'm about to buy something. Luckily, I didn't buy a battering ram because that wouldn't have done that wouldn't have done anything. A heavy chariot actually would have been I think a better idea. I think I ended up buying a spearman here. Oh no, good. At least I did do that. And it will pop up uh, in the encampment, not not in Washington itself. I'm glad that I did that, because I was going to say, like, that's a smart decision since the Japanese didn't bring over in any Spearmen, and the Heavy Chariot has an extra three combat defense, or strength, over the Spearmen itself, so that was a, that was a, I think, a good move. Okay, so I don't really know what to do much with my builder here. I've got two builders, actually. I was sending one up for, towards Los Angeles. Oh, I already have one at Los Angeles. I might have been bringing another one over there just to kind of make the city a little bit better. And we'll be able to kind of strike first. Actually, no, I can't because... Well, yeah, I can strike over the marsh. No, I can't. Yeah, no, I can't. What was I thinking? Because I think I already moved. I... I th yeah. This might have been the same turn. Okay, so I've got Washington down to... At this point, I think in the red, we're going to see three separate... Three separate melee attacks. Luckily, this guy's attacking across the river, which made things a little bit better for me. A little bit better. And there goes Washington. I am in the red in Civ 6 on standard difficulty. And luckily, they lost a lot of... They did lose a lot of health. You know, one way to make... Well, this would be technically cheating. I know a lot of people have a problem with the way difficulty is scaled in Civ 5. But one way... That would be interesting to make the AI tougher in terms of military status-wise uh, for Civ 6 is allow for just just give the AI more experience for every combat they get into because that way they would get more instant heals they'd get more, more promotions which means more bonuses things like that that'd be a really simple change is just like maybe have them level up at twice the rate than normal units. That might be a little bit OP, but um, it'd be kind of interesting. I bet you, I bet you anything, there'd be a mod, there's gonna be like a mod like that one day. But but we'll see. But the, because of the you know the changes to the promotion system, uh, I, I think it would be kind of a cool thing to to see. I'm sure they've thought about it. I bet you they thought about it in Civ Five though. But the problem with Civ Five was the AI would always choose just to instant heal. I'm not sure exactly what their calculations were for that. Not sure if, like, bef below a certain health, they would just automatically instant heal instead of taking the combat bonus. Alright, and I'm going to make my way down towards the south. Got to figure this out. Now, I ended up destroying at least one warrior unit. However, there's a fresh warrior unit just behind my chariot, my heavy chariot. I'm going to call a chariot archer, like, my entire life, I swear. Um... Yeah, so that's kind of the the problem that I'm facing at the moment. So they've they've kind of flanked me a little bit. I mean, I didn't technically get... I think they might be getting a flanking bonus. They should be, but... Um... Oh, crap. Yeah, that's not good. And I'm pretty sure that is a graphical bug. Whatever that is. I don't know what that wall... I saw that wall pop up, and I was like, what is that? I know that there's an excla there's a big red exclamation mark, but I'm also curious what that big wall is. Cause I I do not know. Uh, building an armory in my encampment. I already finished up the barracks. So armory next. Uh, then I think the last building would be a military academy. If things are the same. If if things stay the same there. Ancient walls, I think that's a good idea just in case Los Angeles gets another sneak attack. The AI, AI seems to be pretty good at sneak attacking. Terracotta army, great library. I decided to skip out on wonders. Wait a second. Oh, you know what? I think I misclicked and I was I was probably about to shoot myself. Oh, did I? No, 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 that was the only thing, I think that was the only money I had. I just needed extra melee attacks. And a scout versus a warrior is not that bad, especially 
with my combat bonus for fighting in my home continent. So that ended up, I think, saving me, to be honest. It also helped that the AI started to, uh, to maneuver a little bit more towards New Orleans instead of just focusing in on the siege of Washington, because that could have been really, really bad. Yeah, that could have been super bad. So yeah, at this point we're already kind of starting to see that things are looking a lot better. Just just because they split up. If they would have stayed more focused on the Siege of, of Washington, then they might have had a little bit of a better chance. Actually, you know what all they really needed is a slightly more powerful melee unit. Maybe two spearmen. Maybe just one spearman could have got the job done. A pikeman, a swordsman, who knows? There are several things they probably could have done. Oh yeah, that's right. England tried to uh, forward settle me. And actually, I let them go by. They they never ended up settling, which was strange. Yeah, that was that was weird. Or maybe I was trying to move my builder to stop him from some from going through. And yeah, now they're starting to uh, they're trying to. I mean, every single unit they have is either in the yellow or in the red. So I guess I kind of get their their scattered retreat. But that's where I just tear him apart. So yeah, I start to tear him apart here. No easy way to train an apprentice. And uh, and we have now saved our empire from the attack of the Japanese. So we take out the slinger and take out the warrior, and we're good. So yep, yeah, this was my uh, this was pretty much it for in terms of my gameplay. Uh, you know, the Japanese did a sneak attack, and that was it. I did consider I was trying my best to do a sneak attack on the Japanese city just towards the southeast of London, but uh, because I had pulled back all of my military, it was uh, that was kind of a problem, you know. I could have tried, but I pulled back my military back all the way towards Washington, and then, yeah. My apologies for the border gore. That was the first thing I thought of when, when I, my time was finally up with uh, Civ, Civ 6. The first thing I thought of is... Damn, the border gore is bad. <laughs> but this is going to be, this is somewhat normal. I just wish it would have settled, settled a city, like, right here. It really needed a city, like, right there. Everything else would have been fine. I mean, borders would have naturally grown to the point where, like, by the end, I think, it's safe to say that probably our American empire would have had most of the control on this side of the continent, at least. We had a lot of space to expand. I mean, if this was the game, we would have had a lot of space to have continued to expand. And would have really, I, you know, I should have checked on how the Japanese and the, and the Chinese were doing in terms of cities and in terms of how many cities they had and, and stuff like that. Because if, if we had continued to play this, we're talking like guarantee at least another three or four cities. Guaranteed. If I wanted to take like kind of a, you know, kind of a crappier city, I could have done five. You know, if I could have settled in the tundra or something like that, settled off a, a, a massive mountain range. Although the mountain range, like I said, does give adjacency bonuses, so that could have been pretty good. I mean, we're seeing four cities from the Japanese at the moment, but um, they might have had more, you know, behind the fog of war, obviously. And uh, and then I push through. So I did, I did manage to bring everyone back, and I was gonna try something here. I think it's safe to say we probably could have, we could have taken this city. There's, I mean, there's really no terrain that would have made this difficult at all. They're not even by a river. So that would have been really, really simple. But uh, definitely want to explore more into the Civ 6 naval game because I still have not done much in terms of navies. And uh, I think it was a good idea overall for me to just to focus heavily on just the military, the army. I think that's what people are most curious about. Here's an example of city bombardment because those ancient ruins. Started finally figuring out that those, those, those red buttons meant you can bombard a city. I don't know why I was so confused by that. It's very strange. But, uh, but yeah, this was my gameplay, and here's the very end. Did they capture? Oh yeah, they captured my general. Don't look at that. Don't look at that. <laughs> of course I, of course I scroll to that point, and everyone's gonna be like, "Oh, Drew, what the, what happened?" <laughs> but uh, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this uh, this series. So that was my preview of 100 plus turns in Civilization VI as America. Had a lot of fun. I'm really, I really have high hopes for this game. Um, you know, being able to play it for a second time, seeing its transition, because I played about three months ago, and uh, the, the build has definitely got a lot better, and, and being able to talk to developers more, 
I'm really, I, I really have high hopes for this game. I think it looks really, really good. Hope you guys, hopefully you guys like it as well. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will be bringing more Civ 6 content, lots more Civ 6 content in the future. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.